And then you have people of all levels and it's even better because you can start bouncing things off people that might be a little bit ahead of you or helping people that are a little bit below you. And then everybody has their strengths. I found too, getting to know the women in these groups and like bouncing things off of their strengths like being like, I'm going to use you for this strength because I know that you know what you're doing when it comes to this. But not only that, if someone realizes that you're good and they like you and they want to refer you to other people, then that's even clients that you could get in the future. So I feel like just the connection and the knowledge base and really just like sharing the ideas because it is like a special kind of life. Mama! Let's reimagine mom life together. Mama House Goals is your hub for relatable support and helpful resources that help you fuel yourself alongside motherhood. Your identity is bigger than mom and whatever your goals are, Together, we're making them a reality. When you go and start your business, one of the most important things is to figure out how to have it fund itself. And ideally, we want to make a little money too. It's okay to want to make money. And when bringing together the Mama's Business Blueprint program, I knew we needed a resource that could help be your financial expert in your pocket. And our guest today, Paige, is a fractional CFO. And so what that means is she's a CFO for multiple businesses and multiple companies. If you're also in the financial industry, this is a really cool way to see how you could support multiple clients on your own outside of what you're doing, especially in the online space. But today we're going to talk about really the nitty gritty of getting started in your business, creating financial success, how to set yourself up for success with tracking and systems and what programs you can use what you need to do now in this scrappy season of a startup, and where to go to set yourself up for success. Paige is a mom of two. She's a Texas transplant now living in Southern Maine. And she has taken her background where she brought herself up into the financial world to help so many other businesses have success in theirs. She has a huge fondness for the outdoors. You can definitely find her and her family exploring outside. We talk about how her journey to entrepreneurship has allowed her to have this flexibility and freedom too, so that they can even move out of their house for a part of the year to explore more. So if you're interested in knowing what is possible for your family and online business, you're interested in knowing how to set yourself up for financial success, either in business or personally, we talk about what that looks like just from a household perspective too then grab your headphones or sit down and listen because this is such a good episode. Paige, I'm so excited to have you here. When you start a business, the fact of the matter is we start a business to make money and to bring in money in a different way, even if there's other things attached to it, whether we want to make an impact or we're looking for fulfillment, joy, we want to help people. Those are all true. And at the end of the line, it has to pay for itself at least. And ideally, we're bringing home some money. So I'm excited to talk about money today with you and what that means for people, whether it's personally, professionally, we all have to pay bills and we all have mm -hmm. to pay for the things in our life. So it's a conversation sometimes people steer away from, but one that we have to have. So I want to dive in and just start with what brought you to being a fractional CFO? How did you get started in this business? Oh my gosh. I started off just doing bookkeeping for my husband's family's bed and breakfast about 13 years ago, I literally bought bookkeeping for dummies and started doing their bookkeeping for them because I saw my in-laws just like fighting during tax time because they were so disorganized and like a hot mess. So I started doing theirs and I got way into it and I realized that I was like pretty good at it with the organization and all of that. So I went and got started getting my master's degree in accounting, worked at an accounting firm, got my degree had my kids and realized that I did not want to be like a tax accountant, started just doing bookkeeping. And then as my children got older and I had more brain space available, I started doing more of the strategy work with clients. So we did a lot of budgeting and projections and cash flow is sometimes a touchy subject for business owners. So we work on a lot of cash flow stuff. And so that was the roadmap to doing the CFO work. So cool. And how did you first find this group of online business owners and become one yourself? Because a lot of people can be a CFO or work in the accounting space, but maybe it's more of a brick and mortar setup or they're working underneath another group or a team. So how did you find this space to go out on your own and really focus on the online opportunity? It was probably a mix between social media and QuickBooks. So I used QuickBooks for, I use still use QuickBooks for all of our accounting software for all my clients. And they 
incorporated like an online version. And so most of my clients, I would go to their place of work. Like I would go to their brick and mortar store, I would go to their house or go to their office. And as soon as I realized that I didn't have to do that, like everything could just be virtual, then I just dove into the online world and then started doing more social media and seeing that a lot more people were doing that. And eventually, I think because of COVID, like that pushed my last client kind of to the virtual world. But now everything can just be done. Everything concerning your money can be done online, really, for most of what we do. And we really love to travel. So I pushed even harder to get to that point where I didn't have any space location commitments that kept me from doing the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. And I love watching your adventurous family go and travel and do all these things. You even live in your trailer for part of the year and rent out your home as an Airbnb. So what has entrepreneurship given your family in the sense of freedom and flexibility for you to be able to do that? We live in a tourist area. So we built a house knowing that we would probably rent it out a little bit. And so we bought this camper, we lived in that. And so now we just do that seasonally. But what it does is twofold. It provides us extra money to travel and do the things we want to do because of the extra money we make on our house. But my husband is no longer an entrepreneur. He used to be. So it's gotten a little bit harder, but he's always chosen jobs that still provide that freedom. So we've just mindfully like really just stayed in that space of we need to have location and time freedom. Like it's one of the most, I, I would say it's probably one of our top family values because we do want to be able to move around. We do want to be able to take our children different places at different times. Like we homeschooled them for a little while. Now they're at like a small private school that really accepts us being able to pull them out and do their work remotely and that kind of thing. So it's just everything that we've done has pointed us in that direction, like given us the the ability to do that. And we've really tried to make that happen. I don't think either of us would take a job that was like, you only get one week vacation, you can't do, you know, you don't, you're not in charge of your time and that sort of thing. So we've just really made it a priority, I think. Yeah. And it shows and your kids are a little bit older now, and they probably now accept it and understand it where before you were just like leading the way. So I think that's super cool. Now going back to the finances, the money side of it, what is maybe one to three principles that you have in your house, they could be completely unbusiness related when it comes to money, whether it's conversations you have with your kids and how they spend their money. I remember you talking about how one of your kids saves totally different than the other. But what are some things that you maybe have seen work really well in your household and would recommend other households implementing for good money conversations or practices? I have all of our finances on QuickBooks, but you can do basically the same thing in a spreadsheet. But I think the first and like most basic thing you can do is just look at your bank account. I I probably look at our bank account every day. I'm not going to lie. And not because I like I'm obsessive compulsive about the money, but just because I want to know where our money is going and where we're spending it. We, we have a loose budget, but we're not super, super hardcore with a budget. But I do know, let's say at the end of the year, I know how much we spent eating out. I know how much our utilities were. And I think just being able to see that at every month or something like that is really like a good place to start. And you just looking at your bank account, you can do that. So my husband doesn't love talking about money or numbers. So I have to force him down to this is what we're talking about today. But it is helpful just to talk about it. And we try to keep it very neutral. Like, I don't want to have a lot of emotion wrapped up into it, even though I know that it can be like an emotional thing. If I start increasing my income with my business, I'll tell him and I can say we have a little bit of money to spend in this area. We need to buy skis or we need to do this. So I think just keeping that conversation open and we're not talking about it every day. We're not talking about it every week. Like maybe like probably once a month we go on a little, have a little talk and see where we're at. And he'll ask me like, where are we at? You know, but I think the biggest thing is having a place that you can see it all happening. So whether it's just like a spreadsheet that says your different utilities and maybe like the kid's school or kid's extracurricular, because you'd be surprised at how much you spend on certain certain things like groceries and eating out. So honestly, just being aware of those, in my opinion, is like hugely helpful for your mindset. Just like being aware of where your money is going and you don't really realize how it affects you, but you think, okay, I know where this much is going. I know where this much is going and you try to make a plan and then whatever's important to you, I feel like just naturally starts to fall into place if you can make it happen like that. 
I love you bring that up. A couple of things come to my mind. I've heard so many women, they'll say, how much does your family spend on groceries? And it's like, well, you should just track what you're spending to start, right? Because if somebody else says, oh, we're spending $600 a week on groceries and you're spending a hundred, you're going to be like, oh, okay. And it doesn't really matter what other people are doing, but you have to know what you're spending or it's not going to really help you give any reference to that. And I love that you talk about having money dates. I've heard a lot of people say that with their partner, or even yourself, if it's all on you, where you set a time aside and it sounds like you are like, okay, look, we're not going to make a big deal out of it. We're just going to have this quick conversation. Mm -hmm. And I've heard some people always plan something fun after. So it's like they have this conversation and then it's either we're going out to dinner or we're doing this fun thing or whatever it is. So I think that can really help too. And also catching expenses that aren't supposed to be there. Like if you're not looking at your bank account, you don't know if maybe someone got your credit card number or if things are happening that shouldn't be happening or you realized you signed up for a subscription that you wanted to cancel or things like that. If you're not looking, you're not aware. I kept getting these razor deliveries from Billy. I don't know if you get that. And I knew I needed to cancel them, but I didn't really realize how often they were coming because I don't know about you, but I do not use four different razor heads in one month. Like I do not change my razor head once a week. So I was getting all these different razor deliveries. And until I looked at my credit card statement, I was like, oh my gosh, like we're being charged so much for these. So definitely little things like that come up. I totally agree. So that's like on the personal side of where maybe people can make mistakes. We won't call them mistakes, but there's an area to improve your knowledge to improve the result, right? What about professionally? When someone goes and they jump into investing in themselves or starting a business, what are maybe the top three things that you wish a new business owner or in their first year or two of business would make sure they have organized? first of all, is like just having what I said about the personal, just having a way to keep track of what you're spending and what you're bringing in. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be QuickBooks. It can just be like a basic spreadsheet, but being able to see it on the spreadsheet and say, okay, I spent this much. I've been known to invest in like courses and coaches and things and be like, oh, well, but if you know that there's an ROI potentially ahead of it, like mm -hmm. you're going to get a return on that. So like you're investing in a membership or you're investing in a program and you're going to meet new people and that money is going to be, you're going to make that money back somehow in the future. And even if it's just like an emotional ROI too, like it doesn't always have to have to be like nominal, you know, but I think having just some way of keeping track of your expenses and your income, instead of just ignoring it and just letting it go, let's say you're leaving a nine to five or something, or you're leaving like a secure job to start a business. I think it's so important just to have just a little bit of a a savings or a buffer, depending on your family's financial situation, right? In order to feel confident when you're starting the business, because of course, you're probably not going to start making money immediately, or maybe you are, who knows, but just to have a little bit of a savings to be that safety net, just in yeah. case it takes you a few months. I know a lot of like financial professionals are like, personally, you should have six months worth of savings, which is really nice, but not everybody can do that. So I think I love the idea of having three three months worth of your expenses in a savings. And if you have to use some of that to start a business, that's fine too. I think it really comes down to the personal stuff too, because knowing what you need as a family. Yeah. Where can you cut costs? Where can you say, okay, we're not going to go out to eat for three months because we're trying to build a business or yeah, whatever it is. And knowing, okay, I don't need like a new car right now or knowing where your values are. If you really love new cars, like that's great. If you love eating out, that's great. But like trying to figure out ways to cut your expenses would be good too. Because then if you're starting a business, you're like, okay, I'm saving this much money for my business and I'm cutting it out of my expenses. Like it's perfect. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like just paying attention to it is one of the biggest things when you're starting a business is paying attention to where your money is going, where it's, and keeping it separate really trying to keep, even if it's just like the tiniest business and you're just like, oh, I don't know, just keeping that money separate from your personal, maybe opening its own bank account and just putting a little bit of money in there to start it and just keeping it completely separate is important because sometimes people get down deep and six months have gone by and they've been mixing their business and their personal and it gets all confusing and messed up and people get stressed out during tax time and then you have to fix that later on. Okay. So what I'm hearing is get a spreadsheet together where you can track your expenses. Mm -hmm. Should you also have a folder for receipts, like a, a real or digital way of capturing all your receipts? For your business? Yeah, yeah. I think you could just snap a photo and email it to yourself. That's what I used to do in the beginning is just email it to my work email and put it in the receipts folder on Gmail and then you're golden. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It can just shove all the receipts in the Gmail folder and 
snap photos of them. Perfect. Making sure you have a separate bank account and maybe a separate credit card that you open if you're going to be using a credit card to for transactions, which is typically a good idea so that you can have that flowing. Now, let's say someone is trying to figure out how to project forward, right? I know that's one of the things that you do is you help projections, whether it's a new program or someone's trying to decide if they should step into a certain part of their business. What are some ways that someone can make a solid decision on investing in a program, a group, a business, choosing if that business is the right fit for them when they don't really know where it's going to go? How can they do some projections, some real basic this number of units or widgets, and this is the demand and what that looks like. How can they do some math around that? Yeah. So I think if you're a new business owner, it's going to be a lot harder because you don't have any sort of historical information to base your projections off of. But I always like with my clients, we're usually pretty conservative. So we try to say, we try to be more realistic. If I do this launch, I'm going to make $200,000 in this like one day. If it feels a little crazy to you, then just tone it down a notch and just be a little bit more conservative and say, okay, so if I invest in, if you have a spreadsheet and you say, if I invest in this coach or this membership or whatever it is, you know, that's going to be money going out. So it's going to be like $500 going out, let's just say. And then looking at each month. So we like to do it by, by the month and trying to think, okay, so if I release this offer in this month, this is my hope. I'm going to hopefully make this much money. And so you're going to see how long it takes you to recoup that, the money that you originally spent and looking at that and knowing, okay, I can handle that. Like I can handle three months worth of loss in my business or that I'm going to have to put an extra thousand dollars from my personal into my business. I think looking at it going forward, going that way is really helpful. And then it also allows you to have an idea of how much money you can potentially make. So if you have multiple offers, let's say you're like a business coach and you want to have like ideally three one-on-one people, if you're starting this new business, putting them in there and knowing, okay, these are my three people and this is how much they're going to pay me each month. And like really being able to visualize that money coming in. And then the same with the expense side. If you're a service-based business, you probably don't have a ton of expenses, but if you're paying for Zoom, like putting that in there as a negative and saying, okay, so it's really just like your income minus your expenses is your profit. And if you can sustain a loss for a little while, cash wise, great. If you or like, oh no, I need to make a profit because I need to start paying myself. My family needs money. Then you know how to tweak it a little bit. And then for existing established business owners, it's the same, but they have the luxury of looking back and seeing how historically their business has gone and basing their projections off of historical information with tweaks, depending on any specific changes in like their offerings or their expenses or their team. So helpful. And I love that you bring up measuring a loss during a period of time, because as much as we don't want there to be loss at the beginning of your business or even in the beginning of a new portion of your business, right? So if you've been in business, but you're going to introduce something new, it could mm-hmm. not pay for itself right away allowing yourself to plan for that. And I agree with you looking at the spreadsheet in that way, I've found so helpful in the past to be able to say, okay, and this is where marketing, my background and where we are going to be teaching in Mama's Business Blueprint, where it comes to your side of the you know financial world to say, okay, this is what that loss is going to look like for three months. But we can say that in month four, we're going to have a different result because of the marketing efforts that we put forward in month one and month two and month three. So it's not just like praying and hoping that things are going to look different. You have a strategy and a plan behind it. What are some things that when it comes to that, like a strategy and a plan and planning forward, is there any kind of aha or financial good practices to help set yourself up for success when either building an offer, building a business, building a product? Is there, other than looking at just expenses and revenue coming in, are there things that you should make sure that you're measuring either before or after? I think cash flow is one of those like things that a lot of people can really struggle with. So if you're starting a business and Or if you have a business and let's just say you're creating a product and you're going to sell it, all this money is going to go into creating that product or that offering. So you're going to pay subcontractors, maybe you're going to pay for ads if you're going to do advertising. So just knowing that all of that cash is going to come out before you actually sell the product is key because a lot of people are like, oh, I'll sell the product and then I'll be able to pay all the bills. But usually it happens depending on your line of work, obviously the expenses get paid out first and then the money comes in, especially if you're doing launches and that sort of thing. So especially for established business owners, making sure that you have that money in your account to pay for the expenses, knowing that the income's going to come in after. I think keeping an eye on your cash flow is really important. And 
if you're like a brand new business owner, just checking your bank account and your credit card every week or every day even is basically keep staying on top of your cash flow. Cause you can look at your bank account and be like, oh no, I only have this much money in there. I'm not going to be able to pay this contractor yet. Or I need to maybe connect with some more women and try to get one more client or that sort yeah. of thing. So I think cash flow is definitely one of the most it's very underrated when you're just starting your business. You don't realize how important it is when you grow a little bit more and you have someone that can maybe help you. We do cash flow projections. So if you have a launch here and all your expenses are going out here, what's your cash going to look like at the end of this month or seasonal businesses? I have a client who's a seasonal business. So we have to make sure she keeps enough cash in the bank at the end of the summer to get her through the winter and that kind of thing. Cash flow is one of those, like just checking your bank account every week is like, okay, just do that, you know? <laughs> yeah. And these are great things to implement. No one should not be implementing these things. But mm -hmm. I know for both of us and many people in the world, you get started scrappy and you get started throwing things together. And while it's great to have cash flow projections and it's great to think through that, that typically doesn't happen in your first couple months of business. As much as we're saying, hey, it would be great to do this. And if it all makes sense in your brain, it's going to set you up for maybe larger success or you're going to feel a little more organized. That's not how everybody jumps into business, especially in this space. What has that looked like for you or some of your clients in the sense of just pouring a little belief back into you can do it messy and it's okay. I think especially when we're talking about numbers, it can get scary because you're like, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to do the wrong thing. What are some ways that you've seen people just bare minimum? Like you can get started with just a little. This is really funny. I don't know. Before I started doing bookkeeping, I started a business, like a professional organizing business. I wasn't even married yet. I don't know how old I was. And my dad was like, okay, I'll lend you. Actually, I went to him and I was like, can I borrow like $1,000 to start this business? And he was like, you have to tell me like where the money's going to go. He's an entrepreneur. So he was testing me. Yeah. So I just remember writing like, okay, I looked up, okay, I need this laptop. So I'm going to put this as like $600 or whatever. And I need gas for my car for the next two weeks. I want to sign up for this advertising. So I just like literally wrote on a piece of paper how much I thought that it was going to cost me to start this business and gave it to my dad. I was definitely so grateful that he like lent me, I don't know, $800 to start this business and I could pay it off over time. So I feel like the that's like the most basic, like just write down. I have a friend right now who's starting a new business. She's like, what do I do? I'm like, well, first of all, you need to open a bank account. I don't yeah. care what you do. Just go. It doesn't it have to be in a business name. Your EIN doesn't have to be on it. It doesn't have to be an LLC. Just go and open a separate bank account. I don't even care if it's a checking account under your personal stuff. And then just go put in however much money you think you need to start. And then after that, just start using that. And even like if you're just in the planning stages, just thinking about, okay, how much money is this going to take for me to truly like start this business? Like, I really want to join this group. I really want to buy this software or whatever, and just writing those down. And I feel like that's the best place to start because then you have an idea and it's all in one place still. Yeah. And with the bank account, then you, let's say you get a year into your business and you, you haven't done anything else, but just use that bank account. It's still really easy. If you hire a bookkeeper, you hire someone to like go back and fix all your books they know where everything is. It's in yeah. one place. Helps you keep track of your money going in and out. That's something I've noticed is when it's in its own bank account, it makes all of what you're asking and telling people to do so much easier because you're not sifting through your subscriptions and everything else for your personal life to figure out how much money are you really spending and how much money are you really bringing in once you bring it in as well. It definitely helps keep it cleaner for you to do yourself. Yeah. So you can do it without a spreadsheet if you want. You can just get like a journal and just start writing things down. I love that. So before we wrap up today, I would love for you to just talk a little bit about mentorship programs. That's how I met you, how you've connected with women in other group programs and community, what that's done for you as a person, but also your business. And especially in a business where it can be a lot of strategy or a lot of numbers, a lot of work behind the computer by yourself. What has that brought to you? Oh my gosh, so much. I feel like every investment I've made has been worth it. A hundred percent, a hundred times worth it from when you're self-employed. If it's just you, then you're just, like you said, it's kind of lonely. You're kind of just like, okay, I'm not a professional at copywriting. I need to bounce these ideas off of people. And if you're in a space where you're surrounded by other women or other people that are in the same kind of 
mindset that you are and then the kind of same professional not the same job, but like the same level that you're at, then it's nice because then you can bounce things off of each other and you can be like, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? And then you have people of all levels and it's even better because you can start bouncing things off of people that might be a little bit ahead of you or helping people that are a little bit below you. And then everybody has their strengths. I found too, getting to know the women in these groups and like bouncing things off of their strengths, like being like, I'm going to use you for this strength because I know that you know what you're doing when it comes to this. But not only that, if someone realizes that you're good and they like you and they want to refer you to other people, then that's even clients that you could get in the future. So I feel like just the connection and the knowledge base and really just like sharing the ideas because it is like a special kind of life, right? Like being an entrepreneur, it can be like really lonely. So Mm -hmm. having those people have your back and also understanding what you do, what it feels like to have your own business or to be starting your own business. A lot of people don't know how that feels. So to be in it with others is, is huge. And what about as a mom? What about with your boys? What are some of the things that being an entrepreneur, being in these spaces has shown up like in your family life? Oh my gosh. It's everything that you talk about with your mom friends about being a mom is multiplied by a hundred when it's like your mom friends that also own their own businesses. (laughs) Because you're just like, this is amazing. Oh my God, this is terrible. I feel like it's just, how do you navigate being a mom, working from home and having kids. And if your husband is, or your partner is employed, like a W2 employee, like how do you navigate? A lot of the responsibility falls on the stay at home, work from home parent. Like how do you navigate that? And how do you, you know, marriage stuff. And I feel like being around other moms and for me, especially like boy moms too, because boys are crazy has been so helpful. Like it just, you just feel a lot less alone in what you're doing (laughs) as like a, mom entrepreneur. And I think having what I've started to experience is my kids are 10 and 12. So having friends or other entrepreneurs who are starting their businesses and their kids are like babies or their kids are a lot younger. It's being able to talk to them and, you know, be like, it's okay. It's going to get easier, (laughs) that kind of thing. So I feel like being at those different stages as parents also is so important. So having the groups and the support around that is like priceless. Like I'll invest in that all day long. It's part of my budget in my business to always have some sort of like support group. I agree. It's game changing. If you were to leave one more financial, personal, professional piece of advice with these women today, what do you want to leave with them? I would say don't stress or try not to stress. Just try to keep it neutral is how I feel. Money can be so emotional as it should be. There's a lot of stuff around money, but if I owe a doctor a certain amount of money, I'm going to be like, oh, that's kind of sucks, but we'll figure it out. Just try to make money a little bit more neutral in your Mm -hmm. life and less ups and downs emotionally, I feel like helps the whole situation in general and just really staying neutral, but also paying attention to it at the same time. So trying to pay attention to it without getting too emotionally wrapped up in it would be my biggest thing. That's what I've been trying to work on over the last however many years and (laughs) work on with clients too. Everything's going to be okay. You know, I love that Paige. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for the women that feel called to mama's business blueprint to be able to get a call with you so that you can help them with their finances wherever they're at. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's awesome. I have a business degree. We have multiple businesses and I've now been a full-time entrepreneur for a year and a half. And there are a lot of things that I wish I could have saved time and money with by getting support from someone that had been a couple steps ahead of me. I know that one of my biggest purposes in life is to help make things easier for other women and especially mothers. So after running a program last year where we shared some of the things that I have learned, I had great feedback and now we've brought it to a whole new level this year. This year, we're launching Mama's Business Blueprint. For those of you that are interested in starting a business or you've had a business and you want to take it to the next level. What Mama Has Goals is at the core is helping you find the support and resources you need to go to the next level of whatever it is for you. So whether that's showering, the best snack, moving up in your job, or creating the business of your dreams, we want to find an expert to support you. In this program specifically, we have 12 women that focus on the top things that I wish I had support around when starting my business. From a fractional CFO to help you with your numbers and accounting, 
to supporting your health, your hormones, your gut health, to working with influencers and social media, content creation, sales, working on digital products, whether it's an ebook or a course, knowing how to pursue this, whether you're having mom guilt or fulfillment issues, how to manage your time and work through your schedule, how to really think through who you are and your identity and really stepping into the highest version of yourself, how to hire a virtual assistant, what a virtual assistant is if you want to become one, and how to communicate with the other people in your life, including your partner. So we have marriage support and everything else. This is such an amazing program. It is 12 weeks of group coaching with these pro resources that you can get a one-on-one call with. And you have a monthly call with myself for Q&A, plus these modules for you to consume at your own time and when it's convenient for you. I have worked so hard to bottle up everything that I have learned that I wish someone had bottled up for me to help you know what is possible for you so that you can create money and fulfillment without sacrificing your family to be there for them and to be there for you. So if this sounds like something you'd be interested, I want to invite you to join us in the Mama's Business Blueprint. We're going to be sharing some information here from the pro resources. And I would love for you to check out the show notes where you can join us. Sending you so much love, Mama. I cannot wait for you to be a part of this.